Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Good morning. And it's a blessing again to come your way with God's word of hope for your day today. I'm Bishop James Sansensaki of the Christ Church International in London, United Kingdom. We thank God for blessing us with another day. And I'm grateful to God for your lives. No matter what has happened overnight, Jesus is still Lord. The scripture says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I pray that God will order the word of his grace to be directed to your life, that your joy will come this morning in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you from James chapter 1 verse 4. Uh, it says, don't try to get out of anything prematurely um, from both the Living Bible or the Message Bible. It says, don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work. So you become mature and well-developed. See, there is a process of life. There are certain things when we take them out prematurely, they haven't matured enough for them to be a good blessing to us. You know, if you take food that has not cooked properly, you don't have the patience to let the food cook properly, and you take it and eat it, the eating process itself, depending on the stage of the cooking, it might start even itching in your mouth or it may get into you all right and you may feel satisfied, but after a few minutes and hours, you start having tummy troubles and you have an issue the whole day. And so don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed. There is the need for patience. I, God sent me this morning to speak to someone to be very patient, to be very patient and to go through the process that God has ordered for you. It is not the same as sitting down and doing nothing. Sometimes we want some things in a very quick way, but instead of you to fret about because things may be delaying, you need to look and see how far God has brought you. The whole process of what you have been going through is a preparation for something great ahead. This morning, God sent me your way with this word to tell you, be patient with God, and be patient with yourself. <clears throat> be patient with God and be patient with yourself. Anytime we try to help God, we end up producing an Ishmael who ultimately becomes the subject of our mockery. Abraham was promised by God to give him a son and he tried to help God and he ended up in problems. So one of life's frustration is that God's timetable is rarely the same as ours. When I said that he produced an Ishmael, the Bible tells us God promised Abraham that I'm going to give you a son. And I'm going to give you a son that will come between you and Sarai or Sarah. Later on, because of what appeared to them as if it is God's delay, the Bible says that Sarah, out of frustration, then suggested to Abraham to go and have intercourse with his slave girl so that she can be pregnant and the culture in those days is that when your slave girl or your servant becomes pregnant then anything you own it becomes yours as well so if your servant is pregnant then it becomes the child becomes your own but that is still not God's plan they produce an Ishmael all right God came and said that is not the one it is an Isaac and wait for him eventually when Isaac was born the Bible says Ishmael himself became a mocker he started mocking Sarah for an old lady to have had a little child. So we may go through frustrations in life, but let's wait for God. You know, and when we are frustrated with the seemingly slow progress we are making in life, it doesn't mean that we should stop doing certain things. It doesn't mean that we should allow the frustration to hit us. We are all human, and sometimes the things we want in life may not come. The timing may not be the right way. The right thing that we want and the way we want it to come is not coming the same way. But don't let frustration drive you to do anything silly. Don't let frustration drive you to do anything against the word of God. Learn to be patient and in the place believe God and look at the grand scheme of what God is doing. I pray that God give you understanding of his ways and dealings when it comes to his timings. Remember that God is never in a hurry but he's always on time. He will use your entire lifetime to prepare you for your role in eternity. Whilst we came on earth, it is all preparation towards eternity. Some people can live for 50 years on earth, for 70 years, for 100 years, and it's a whole preparation for eternity. God sometimes can take a whole long time just to prepare us for just one event. 
and he has been good at doing that. And that is the important thing you have to discover in life. The Bible is filled with examples of how God uses a long process to humans to develop character. To us, it's a long process, but with God, it's not a long process. So as to develop character, especially in leaders. You see, it took 80 years to prepare Moses, including 40 in the wilderness, 40 in the palace, and then 40 in the wilderness. So he will learn two worlds when you have brought, been brought up in affluence and with a silver spoon in your mouth. And then God took him after 40 years of training in the palace. He was then taken from there and trained in the desert. So he will know how to handle sheep. And then ultimately was brought back to lead a whole nation and to found a nation and to be a leader of a nation. You need to have the two wells of things that exist within a nation, the poor and the rich, hard life and soft life. He enjoyed all. He had all 80 years of preparation. For 14,600 days, Moses kept waiting and wondering, is it time yet? But God kept saying, not yet, not yet. But he was still within God's time. You see, I have found routes that great souls are grown through struggles and storms and seasons of suffering. So be patient with the process. The Bible says in James, he advises and says, don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well developed. Sometimes there are some issues you need wisdom and patience to grab to get to the grip of it before you raise the matter and discuss it. A lot of you have cut off relationships prematurely because you didn't wait and have the patience to actually analyze things before you went out to speak. It is said that it takes great patience to dissect and to see the intestine of an ant. You need wisdom and great patience to do it. And scripture says in Hebrews, you have need of patience. So don't be discouraged when it appears the process is delaying. When Habakkuk became depressed because he didn't think God was acting quickly enough. Habakkuk chapter 2 and Habakkuk chapter 3. He says he became depressed because he didn't think God was acting quickly enough. God had this to say to him. He said, these things I plan, the things I plan won't happen right away. Slowly, steadily, surely, the time approaches when the vision will be fulfilled. If it seems slow, do not despair, for these things will surely come to pass. Just be patient. They will not be overdue a single day. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. So remember how far you have come? Not just how far you have to go. Sometimes we look at how far we have to go, but I want you to look at how far you have come, how far you have come in the academic field, how far you have come in relationships, how far you have come with the raising of those children and not how, how much you are left to go. You are not where you are and you are not where you want to be yet, but neither are you where you used to be. I said you are not yet where you want to be yet, but neither are you where you used to be years ago. I do remember some of us have lived for some time on this earth. <laughs> People wore a popular button, you know, with the letters P B P G I N F W M Y. That stood for, please be patient. God is not finished with me yet. P B P G I N F W M Y. Please be patient. God is not finished with me yet. I came to announce to you, God isn't finished with you either. So keep on moving forward. Even the snail reached the ark by persevering. Keep on moving forward. Keep on gradually deal with the matter. Gradually bring the discipline into the home. You look at your family and think, I'm too late. I should have started this years ago. It's all right. You have come this far. Whatever you are left with, just believe God. Start from where you are today, but follow the process. Don't cut corners. It won't end well. Believe God. His timings and his delays to you may look like a delay, but his delays are not denials. God will see you through. God will bring you through. Keep on moving forward. Keep on believing God and keep on being patient with God and with yourself. Anybody that tries to cut corners ends up with an accident. If any time we try to move out of the will of God, we end up walking right into the arms of the devil. May the Lord deliver you this morning and help you to prevail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And until I come your way again tomorrow, I'm Bishop James Ansinsaki of the Christ Church International in London, United Kingdom. May God grace you this day. May your paths shine according to the word of the Lord. And may Jehovah cause 
all kinds of favors to attend to you. Above all, may you receive the grace to be patient in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Have a beautiful, blessed, and victorious day. Bye-bye.